Hello, my name is Toby and this is my review of the Canon 28mm FD lens. To give a bit of history behind the FD series, it was first introduced in 1971 with the release of the Canon F1 camera and was the main lens mount until it was discontinued in 1987 when Canon switched the EOS mount. In this video, I will be reviewing the newer version of the FD 28mm lens, also known as the FDN 28mm which was released in 1978. The main difference between the two models are the newer version is more compact in size and weighs less than the older model. In addition, all FDN lenses use the SSC coating, whereas the older models came with either the SC coating or the SSC coating. The SSC or Super Spectra coating was designed to increase the contrast of the lens and also reduce the amount of flaring. Now what I like about this lens is that it's lightweight, which makes it good for running good style filmmaking. It had a good contrast and colour to the picture, and also it's cheap because it's a vintage lens. What I find a problem with this lens is there is a little bit of flaring, even with the Super Spectra coating, compared to newer lenses. And uh, it is a little bit too small for my liking, you know, if you, I, I have pretty big hands, so when it comes to handling the lens, it does cause a bit of issue when you try to change the aperture ring and the focus ring. Now the 28mm has a very smooth focus ring which I really enjoy. It also has two dead stops, one at infinite which is very handy, uh, and then the other right at the front which just goes a little bit past the first measurement which is a kind of annoying but you know what you're gonna do. Uh, talking about the measurements, the focus goes from one foot or 0.3 meters to 10 foot or 3 meters and then infinite after that and then uh, also on aperture it's aperture 2.8 which is not the you know it's not the widest aperture but it's not the worst and it goes down to 22 as well which is nice because I like an aperture which can open really wide and also close now I haven't really had any problems with this lens apart from a few very minor problems. One of them is that because I'm using it on my A7S II, I have to use a uh, a lens adapter, and I use a I'll put a link down below to the uh, lens adapter I used. I think it was like 30 quid, so it's not that much. Uh, the camera itself was about 100 pounds mint from the box, which is you know it's mint condition straight out the box, which is kind of nice, especially for a, a lens from the 1970s. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the only real problem I had was that it was a bit tricky putting the adapter onto the lens. And sometimes, if you don't put it on correctly, it locks up, it locks the aperture to its widest point, which can be a bit of a problem, especially, you know, if you want to use the aperture. So kind of keep an eye out for that. Uh, if you do get this lens and you do put the adapter on and you seem to have trouble opening or closing the aperture then it would probably be because it's either A set in auto mode which does tend to happen so kind of keep an eye out to see if it's in auto mode and also if it's, uh, if it's the adapter which is causing the fault. Now finally I would say um, it's kind of like the build quality of the lens. The build quality of the lens is quite nice, you know, it's it's hard plastic. Um, it doesn't feel flimsy though, which is always good. When you do focus the ring, it does have a bit of barrel extension, which is it's only very minor, it's nothing too much. But you know, if you don't really like bar barrel extension then, uh, you know, maybe just not the lens for you. Um, but yeah, I really like this lens. It's a very nice 28mm, it's a very good focal length. Um, I've used it for a couple of short films so far. Um, I'll probably put the link down below when they're, when they're up online. And also I'll show some footage at the end of this video, kind of showing the kind of performance of the lens. Which I, what I found with this lens is that it's, it's sharpest at about four or five, about five at, on aperture and uh, it's fine about that. You know, it did lose a bit of sharpness when you open it around 2.8, but 
it's an old lens it's you know that what it does and it's a very it's a fairly cheap lens compared to modern lenses uh, so yeah I would recommend lens if you're into vintage lenses uh, now because it's a vintage lens it doesn't have autofocus it doesn't have image stabilization you know it doesn't come with all the nice gadgets you get with newer lenses but what you do get is a very nice looking lens with a nice picture quality in my opinion you know it's a very vintage look and that's why a lot of people are trying to get vintage lenses but yeah in the end of the day it's a good lens it looks nice and it's cheap so i would highly recommend getting this lens uh, i also have the canon fd 50 millimeter which is the older version which i will probably do a review on later as well when i have the time but yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!